Okay, the first one, right? What was the first question? Why or something like that? Yeah. Uh, one. He was supposed to do an. Does this very 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 easy? We, we are choosing uh, if it is if it is uh, zero zero do an and operation zero one do one. so this is just what a multiplexer right because we are choosing between this we are choosing between um, an and gate so you have a multiplexer here right you have an and gate. You have an O gate. You have an what? X O gate, and then you have a an inverter. These are two inputs, two inputs, two inputs. And this one, this is A, B, A, B, B. And this is what I think it was A or something like that. B. Right. This is here is zero 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 one one zero one one. This comes out. This is F one. So if F is zero zero, right, it will route the answer from this one to here. Why? It's as easy as that. What kind of thing do you think about it? There's nothing to be think about. Yeah, so do what you do. Like, uh, okay, in the guitar system, right? Uh, everybody must have a different answer because everybody thinks differently. Somebody can do this with a decoder. Somebody can do this with just with just uh, and uh, um, and this or gate or something. So everybody answer must be different based on how you think. But you guys just copy them. So so it means that there was, there was no thinking involved. Decoder, encoder, uh, uh, logic gates, whatever you can use to design this. That's all I want. Hmm? Okay, so let's go to one of them. Okay, so now the, the person had and this one. Well, how does this one work? This one around is one to two addition. This one is one to two addition. This one is one to two addition. This one is one to two addition. So, okay. What is it? What is it? The person just wrote F, right? Yes. F is one to zero. So, but here, F is two bits. Here F is two bits. But he has only one bit for F. So, how does that work? Okay, so now, uh, wait, so now, let's see this, so, okay, let's say f is just one bit. If f is zero, what does that? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about his design, so we're going to do this particular design. Stand up. 
Ando, he's not here, right? Oh, oh, man, he gets here. <laughs> so now, he, he actually has only one thing. So, so if that is one, what happens? I don't even know what happens, right? And then, his hand gets, what is, I guess, one bit. How does it? I can't get one between. We just one this line away. So it means that there was no thinking involved at all, not even one. But then everybody decided to do also the same thing. I mean, even if you're using a decoder, how does a decoder even work? Like the what a decoder does is that it is a, a two by four decoder, right? The decoder just enables one output, right? So if if the decoder wants to enable this, it will be one zero zero zero, right? So that's how a decoder works. It doesn't. It, it can actually do this. Do, do you guys understand? How does it do it? How does it do it? How does it do it? So, so what is the, the difference between a decoder and a multiplexer? I think, and I and I even took time to even explain all this thing for us. You were I wasted my time on decoder, how to design a decoder, went through the truth table of a decoder, then did the security diagram for a decoder, even hand drew it. I mean, that's fine, that's fine. But I mean, the assignment, if I give you an assignment, it means for you to go and revise because you guys did this thing already. You guys have done the guitar system already. So I just want you to, you to revise. And if you are able to do it on your own, the, this one, the, like the exam should be like, you should get like a, at least 95%. And then there are two courses, right? Two courses. They are all three, three, three hours, right? If you get, if you get 95, 95 in, in each of them, imagine where. It will land you. Unless, unless you don't care about your what the GP, what the GPA, or whatever they call it. <laughs> huh? You have to do it. <laughs> nah, because, because if I give an um, assignment, it's like yes, it's like yes, three marks for you. you. Just go and study it for like thirty minutes and just do the assignment. In like five minutes, just just like one hour, just like one hour of your day finish. Once you understand the concept, it's finished. Three marks. But from here, it means that you, it means that you guys are getting. If I'm giving five marks for this, everybody's getting like one and a half, one some zero, then stuff like that. So it don't, it don't really help you guys, right? I think, I think, I think only one person had it also, but he, uh, I think only one person had it. He did it like this. Only one person. Uh, uh, the list is too long. I can't go through it. I mean, you don't have to draw it like this, but it has to follow a trend or it has to make sense or it has to work. Because if you draw something, if you draw a thing like this, it doesn't work. Or, okay, if you can explain how it works to me. Then maybe I might actually mark you, right? So, but the, the person, or oh, they are not also here to explain anything, right? But from my own analysis, it doesn't work. You understand? And, and then I think I posted some books. Books. If you, in case you have any issue, there are, there are books here, a lot of books here that you can go through. Then just. 
revise. Is these are just easy, easy uh, basics. I mean, we teach this to junior high school people right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's true. This Boolean logic and state machines and stuff like that. It's, it's for you. And then, you just must understand the concept. That's all. Once you understand the concept, that's all. But you guys don't want to understand the concept. Right? And, I, and I took time to explain the concept to you. Right? If you get, in case, in case, in case you're actually giving something like that, the first of all, you, you draw your truth table, then you, from your truth table, you can case your secret from the, from the truth table. I've explained all this. Or, and then, okay, there are books too. And I, and, and I did some recordings for, for the evening guys. So if you guys don't understand anything, you can just go and watch them. So, and I've, and I've actually taken an effort for you guys not to feel at all. Nobody, can, nobody should feel this course. So guys you recommend maybe some YouTube to feel I don't have I don't have anyone. I don't know. Man. I don't use. It. I, I said I have given you the books, right? I'm giving you books, right? I've given, and I, I said and I actually recorded some videos for the evening guys too. So you, you so you can just watch them. You just have to watch the videos. Do some. Do a very do very little reading. Do your. No, how do, you, how do you call it? Phone works, and then you get 95% simple. But now they are think the marks have come down to like 80. So oh, uh, for like for like um, all of you, the marks have come down to like 80%. So that so now I think the highest you can get is 80 because the homeworks are like 10, 10. <laughs> okay, okay, so now, um, Okay, now let's start. But from what you guys have done, I don't see how we can move away. Because now we are going to another another dimension, completely different. And then if you don't understand um, what the basics, cry, this one will be difficult to you. So if you have your own time, your own free time, just take time to revise your digital your digital logic design or whatever it was, right? Just take, just 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 like one hour, you, you can just grab the concept. Just one hour and uh, finish. So that at least now, instead of 95, you can get like 80. Oh, nah. You guys are just wasting my time. And then the, the, there is another one to the other one. And then the lab, the lab, you guys. You, you guys have not done it. So we're like zero 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 throughout. Except one person. So that's why the max have come down to 80%. So now fight now fight hard for the 80%. That's Okay, now, so after, um, after this, I'll be taking the labs on maybe Wednesday. You, you, you will take the labs for me, right? All, all the labs. But if. But it's not my fault. <laughs> What can I do? As I said, it has made it so easy for you guys. Just an assignment. Just go home, read something, and do it. Then get, then get ten points, ten points, ten points. Then you continue.
Okay, okay, so now let's continue with um, hardware description languages. We are going to use only, only some few well, it's a few hours to learn what hardware description languages are, right? Yes. And then, yeah, I think, and I use about two years, so you, but you guys are sharper than me, so. You guys are sharper, you guys are younger and sharper, right? You're great, sharper. Are you great, Are you see? All right, so now, we are starting with Hardware, the description languages, and then HDL. They are, they are both HDL. Hardware, description languages, right? Now, over and over again, this is the end goal of our. Uh, uh, this is our, our end goal, right? Now, we will be able to design, we can design memory from the scratch using logic gates. <laughs> right? But what again? <laughs> what? What do you mean? And you were designing an aerial actually. <laughs> So now you guys can design an ALU now. At least, at least now, at least right now you can design an, an ALU. You know what an ALU is? Arithmetic logic unit. It has other subtractor, AND gates, OR gate, XOR gate, that kind of stuff, right? Then you guys can design a register file, right? You guys, but you guys can design memory, and then everything, every component here, you can design using logic gates. The AND gates, the OR gates, and stuff like that. But now we don't do that anymore, right? We use high-level language to design that. So you don't, you don't actually have to, you, you don't actually have to um, sit down to draw your your gates and all, all of that. Like you just sit down and you write high-level language, a high-level language like C, C++, but not like C, C++, but almost the same, right? And then it will it will design all those things for you. Right? So that is our end goal. So we are going to use our HDL to design this entire thing. And then we have and then we are going to use our, our tool. I think it's called the bad right? To convert the code into logic gates. And then you will now upload or is it uh, upload the code to the board that we to the board I showed you guys. I showed you some board, right? And, and if you able, then see how it works, right? It's so easy. Like, like once you make up your mind to understand it, this is just. <laughs> this is so easy. <laughs> so, 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 so easy, right? Now, if you look at those of you who have uh, Apple M1 Ultra. This is the internal architecture. This is how it looks like. It, it is made up of 114 billion transistors, right? The transistors are grouped um, to make, they are grouped into like, um, into what we call models, right? 
and then each model has its, its own function. Like we can have um, we can have GPUs inside there. We can have memory, right? We can have the the CPU core itself. We can have caches, right? And then all of these ones are made up of the transistors. Yet again, I've shown you how a transistor is, I've, uh, and I've shown you how to use the transistor to make logic gates, right? Right? Okay. I mean that's right. But so now I mean the 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 interesting thing is that if you look at the computing system, I think during the phase door, something I said, um, we have you have some you, you, you have some computing or some computation. We have computation units, right? If you look at a typical computing system, and then we have some interconnected, and then we have memory. Right? I said something like this, right? You guys remember something like this? I wrote something, I think, and I did something like this. And I said, uh, I said, uh, I said, this, this, this one has probably C, uh, CPU, GPU, and, and stuff like that, right? Now, if we check the which one will use more, more transistors? The computation unit or memory? Anybody? Yeah. We, we said that um, the Apple M1 has 1.4 billion right, transistors. So, and I'm saying that we have CPU is here and then we have memory. Which one do you think uses more? Transistors. Yes. Which one? Which one? Anybody? Yes. Why? Yes. Why? When the memory stores stores power, the data using the transistors. So they are able to get a lot of transistors. Yeah. Right. So now, if you look at um, if you take a typical SRAM, I show you the picture of okay, of an SRAM, right? I think the last time we met was something like that. I said it is made up of what? A pass transistor. Right? It looks like this. Oh. You guys remember something like this, right? This is a Right, if you look at a typical S RAM, and it looks like this, the internal architecture looks like this. And this architecture stores just one bit. Right, so we have, and then I said that the NOT gate has two transistors. This has two transistors. Okay, this one, this one. So how many of them? At least six. There are more to it, but let's say we, we are using just six. So this six transistor stores only one bit of data, only one bit. So now, if you have, let's say, a 5.2 megabyte memory, how many transistors do you think it can take? Do it. How many transistors do you think a 5.2 megabyte memory has? You see, this one will come in the exam very, very easy. So once you can just do it yourself, it becomes very easy to you, right? Huh? Me megabytes. How many transistors can this one store? I said that um, the SRAM has six, only six, six transistors stores only one bit. And I have 5.2 megabytes of memory. How many transistors are there in this one, in this 5.2 megabytes? Logic and reason, this is just simple. Hurry up. This one in the exam should take like 30 seconds. 
just 30 seconds. I'm back. 5.2 megabyte memory. We have to spare assistance. Logic came. Divide, but. Eight seven. Eight seven three what? Eight seven three. Eight one. Eight seven three. Eight one. Eight one. Eight one. Three zero seven zero 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 So, if I, in case you have something like this, right? 5.2 megabytes in this. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I think, I think probably this, maybe. Now, you know, in case you are giving something like this, 5.2 megabytes memory, right? And you want the number of transistors, how many bases in 5.2 megabytes? This is just basic square. Now, you, you have from here to here, the, Data width is uh, data width is eight bits because of this five one two mega. Right. So this represents the data width, which is eight bits, right? You guys already know this. And then I have the number of locations within the memory will be what five one two times two to the power mega twenty. Right? So it means that um, the entire thing is 5.2 times 2 to the power 20 times 8 bits times 6. So what is this? So you can see how how easy it is, right? Once you think small, yes, basic thinking, right? not even high level thinking. Eh? But, what again? 5.2, and, and I want to know how many transistors are there in 5.2 megabytes of memory, right? And then the 5.2 megabytes of memory means that um, the house. This by this means 8 bits. You guys don't know. You guys know this already. This one represent eh? yeah, okay. This one will be the data wave of the memory. The data wave of the memory. You know what it is? you know what that is, right? If I right? Data wave of a memory. I'm not saying it. You know what that is? Data wave of a memory. You know, the memory has, if you take any memory at all, right? Right? There are, there are locations within the memory. So, how many, how many locations are within the memory is represented by this one? 5.2 mega, right? So this is 5.2 times 10 to the... You know, mega and... Mega means to the power 20. You know that, right? The data wave just means in each location, how many bits can be stored? Charlie, the noise man. So 8. So it means that I'll 8 times 5.2 times 2 to the power 20. Then times the number of transistors for storing one bit is 6. That will give me how many transistors? I want to make up bite of memory has, right? So it's like what? Like 12 billion transistors. Like 
Somebody say 55. Somebody say 55. So this 55 million is used for just 512 megabytes. So, you guys understand, right? Question, we will just give you two six. Yeah. Okay, so part of a DRAM. How many transistors are in a DRAM? We talked about this last week or was it last week or whatever. So this is for SRAM, right? Part of a DRAM. One transistor. So you see that the DRAM uses um, less transistors than the and that's to mean that um, memory has more transistors than actually compute. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so now how how do we handle this one point one one four billion transistors within the Apple M1 Ultra, right? Amen. Huh? So how so how do we handle the billions of transistors? You can't actually you can't actually sit down to draw you can't actually sit down to draw the transistors, right? So we are going to use the hardware description language. HDL. Now when you talk about HDL, people just think it's some software language that like like they see. C++, that will just get translated into some machine code or something. Right, so there are differences between, uh, you know, HLLs, HLLs, right? HLLs. What is that? Yeah, right. You know we have HLLs. HLLs. High level languages. And then we have the HDL. Hardware description language, right? So now, if, if I take maybe C, you guys know what C is. If I say it's uh, A, B, C, you know what C is supposed to be A plus B. Right? They're they just some, some simple C language, right? In, in HDL, right? I'll have something like wire A, B, C, right? Almost the same thing, probably the same thing. Um, C is equal to A plus B. I assign, just assign 
A plus B to C, right? This is the high level language, right? And then this, this, this is ADL. This is ADL. This is high level language, right? You guys know how this works already. How does it work? From from this code to to the machine code, how, like how does it work? No, I mean. I mean, after the machine code, sir. How does it work? After the machine code. After the machine code. Yeah. How does it work? How does the C language work? Or the C code work? From the C to the machine, how does it work? I mean, you have some design, uh, you have some kind of software design flow, right? Yeah. Then, we also have ADF design flow. So, and I want to, you want to compare the two, right? So, if I take the C, how does it work? You, you guys put in C already, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, then after that, what happens? So you guys understand. You guys have coded with C for a long time, so you guys know. But now, now, now. so uh, you guys are you guys have done your final year projects, right? But like you are using what? What? Yeah, what are you doing? Everyone is doing something. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm using to that. I'm doing a little bit of Thank you. So, look at you. You're in Java. Yeah, I'm using Java. What are you doing? You're forget. You're forget. Huh? What? I'm blockchain. What are you doing? You're forget. Smart what? I do what? <laughs> and then so what? So what? So what are you using? An Arduino. What? I use it. One more time. Google controller. So what is the language C? Or C plus plus. C plus plus. Okay, that's. I mean, so, so. You guys must know how the code works. Now, from once you, once you write the code, you, you for C, right? C knows that um, it is going to be executed on the hardware, right? It is going to be, it is going to use a CPU, right? Right. So we know that the CPU has what memory. We already know this. Right? Yeah. It has an ALU, right? Right? Yeah. Probably it has two memories. Yeah. It has instruction it has it has instruction memory, right? It has data memory. Right? Right? Yeah. So what happens here? This 
Once, uh, once you compile your code, right, into your machine code, your machine code is made up of, I think I, I, think I said this already, numbers, right? 0, 1, 0, 1, whatever the number is, right? Now, the instructions, the, it has something called the opcode. I said this already, opcode, right? The opcodes will be stored in the instruction memory. The opcodes are stored in the, the in instruction memory, while with the data side, is stored in the data memory, right? That's how it works. So, so for the machine code, it will store some data. If the if there is data to be stored, it will store it in the memory. If there is instructions to be stored, it will store it in the in this kind of memory, right? If there's no data, but here, as I said, we have C and B, we have A, B, C, right? Now we have also a register file within the CPU, right? It also stores like small small amount of data, right? So it will create temporary allocations to store the A, B, C, right? Now what happens? So it comes into the instruction memory and read the 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 upcode of it. The, the, and erase the opcode, right? Then what happens? The opcode will go through a decoder, right? To decode what is this. So it will decode, it, in this instance, it will decode that it is a plus. So it means that we need to give some values to the A only, right? The values, some values will be read either from the data memory or the, or the register file. And then give it to the ALU, two values, A and B. Right? And then the ALU will do the, the plus, the addition. And then the value will be stored back to the register file or the data memory. That's how it works. Simple, right? I have one question before you do. Say, before the data is being stored, is the ALU and the data? Is it encoded? Does it pass through the encoder before it goes there? Before the data? Yeah, because when I call it, you are seeing a path through the decoder to encode the information. Yeah. So, is it encoded to the data? And do the encoder go against the value? Yeah, the value. Yeah, the data store. No, no. It just goes in the direction. The data will be stored in either the register file or the memory at runtime. After you've compiled everything and then you have actually loaded it, it will be stored. Um, it will know that you have the code, the code will be divided into sections, instructions, and data. Right? No, no, I mean, it will, be, it, will be, it, will be, it will be divided into instructions and data. And then data will be stored in these memories. Right? Instructions will be stored here. So, so it knows that it has stored some, some data within here and here. Yeah, I'm saying before that data is being stored, like the incoming of the data, is it encoded before it gets Where is it coming from? So, let me ask you, how about the wrong one? I think, in the side of the side, the question is, does it come from one? Is it encoded before it gets No, no, no. As I said, as I said, right? As I said, really, it's... Now, from the concept, right, the code will be translated into machine code, right? The machine code has sections for data, just data. So it knows ahead of time that this, this part of the, this part is data. It knows this part is instructions. So after that, it will store the data in the data memory, store instructions in the instruction memory. Yeah, so now, once you read it, right, then the, you read the opcode, the, the opcode will actually give that, um, Okay, this is addition. Now, this addition, when we read from this memory location, location A, this memory location A, and store the results in location C. That's how it is. That, no, no, that's not what is in the area. And, as I said, it will read from the instruction memory. Without it, like, 
Like, no, 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 so, uh, so that's why I said um, before before you can understand all of this, you must understand the basics already. What is a decoder, right? What is what is uh, so so that's what I said. The decoder takes the whole code, right? The whole code, the the whole code will now tell you that we are doing addition or something. So the decoder takes the whole code. The decoder output will be oh, do an addition. Do subtract. There are so many. There are so many of them. Uh, addition, subtraction, x, y, and so many. So the decoder now select one of them based on the opcode. So here you are doing addition. The decoder will look at the opcode and see that oh, we are doing an addition. So now wrap. So now it will now enable and tell it that oh, now read from this memory location. They store the value in this memory location. That's why it does. Yeah. This, this is not really part of the course, so... And I was just trying to make a point. Okay, so... So I said this one is not part of the course. What about you? It's been very painful. I live this part. I don't ask... Master, ask the person the question. Yes, ask the person. I don't need any ground. Please, please. In our app and our books, our wisdom, the only thing that is similar to the Ebola that we have to call it the most serious in the end. I want to answer the functionality of the Ebola we have to you are selecting one channel at a time, right? From many, many channels. There's some blue speech. Yes, basically. Basically, it selects one channel out of so many channels, so it's a kind of a decoder. Like, like, like this. It is selecting one instruction, just one instruction, out of so many of them. Right? We are selecting so many, we have so many, we have so many outputs from a decoder. We have so many outputs from a decoder, but it selects one at a time, just one at a time. How how would I do that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't design the coding. So understood, right? As I said, no, I, I just want to understand if, if you guys understand how your C code works or your hardware. Uh, uh, are you part of the class? Understood. So now, so now you see how the C code works, right? Now let's go to you guys know that already, or you guys know I don't think. Now you can. So let's go to the hardware, right? How does the hardware code also work? Will it be the same? Now you see that we are using we are using the entire thing here. A CPU, right? Yeah. And then this code gets translated, and then this code gets stored in the memory of the CPU. Your hardware code is doing what? It's designing the CPU itself. Understood? 
It doesn't translate to machine code or anything. Your hardware code is designing the CPU itself. Yeah, yeah, you are designing the CPU itself, the ALU, the memory, everything. So that's what hardware code do. It doesn't translate to machine code, but you are designing the hardware itself. So what? But so now, so now, so now, wait, so now, wait. Uh, this one, the C will be compiled using some kind of uh, software, right? Some kind of probably if I use it, probably what? Uh, Microsoft one. Microsoft whatever, whatever way. You are using that will get um, this in the software, right? Now for the for the for this one to write, you have this is the one. Right? This this software code, uh, this software here will convert the C code into the machine code. This you got to convert your your Indian language into logic gates, and gates, all gates, and all gates. So you have seen the clear difference, right? So now if you have something like this, this code will be converted into the logic gate itself, but not some machine code to store this among CPU, right? Understood? Yes, sir. Can I continue? Yeah. Right, so so now. So after I have time, I get the visual implementation of the application. Pardon? After I have time, you couldn't get the visual implementation. Yeah, of course. Understood. So, that is what we are going to learn in the one hour or two hours we are going to be learning from. After that, you guys are going to be experts in designing. Uh, Designing machines, right? Designing your CPU, your decoders, and, and stuff like that. Right, so now the, the, there are two main, two main languages. Yeah, there is Verilog, there is BADL, right? I think Verilog is used in, in the US and then in Asia, Korea, Japan, and stuff like that. Now, BADL is used in Europe. Right, but they are, they are almost similar. They are all hardware languages. If you learn one, you can easily learn the other. Now, in case you are using a tool like that, in case you are using a tool like that, you, might be right. you can combine the two languages together. Right? For instance, um, I'm designing, for instance, I'm designing a CPU, right? I have a memory, right? Right? And I can design this ALU with um, DHDL. I can design this memory with Verizon. Right? Right? And then I can combine these two, these two things into one. I can do that in hardware using commercial tools like Debug. But can you combine C code and C? Oh, I don't know. Can you guys? Can it be I'm talking about software, you know, software language. Probably, I don't know. You guys will know, right? But in hardware, you can, com you can combine languages. That is the most important thing here. Right, so now here, we are going to study very much. Not BHDL because that is what I study. I, I didn't study BHDL. I, I studied very long. So that's what we are going to study. Right, and now uh, the hardware will give you. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So the hardware language will, will give you access to the, the gates, to give you access to registers. Right? It will give you access to wires. Wires and stuff like that. Right? So you use this one, the, the wire, the register, the case to design the hardware itself. Right? And then after you have designed 
the hardware. I think you have tools that you must use to actually see whether the hardware works or not. Right now, the main goal of hardware languages is that you design the code. Right, the end goal is that you have to actually make the hardware itself. You have to design the code and send it to and send it to some kind of foundry, right? And then they will actually make the chip for you, right? You are making chips. You are making the chip itself, right? But if you make the chip without testing it from the beginning, there will be an issue, right? If you send it to the foundry and then it comes back, I think averagely it costs about. Cost about ten thousand dollars to make just yes, one single chip. So if you make a mistake, yeah, so if you make a mistake, let's say um, you are designing a four-bit adder, and then you make a mistake, you, and then you make a mistake and design a three-bit adder. Once they send it to the foundry, you have spent ten thousand dollars already. Once they come back and 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 it, and it doesn't work, they don't care. So you must be really careful how you actually design. Right. I mean, if you get to work in, uh, if you get to work in Apple or, or wherever, Apple or Samsung or something, if you go to, if you go to Korea, right? Because they have so much money, right? The place, the place I worked, we actually designed the chip itself, right? So because they have so much, money, they have so much money. You send the chip, it doesn't matter. Ten thousand dollars gone. Send the chip, ten thousand dollars gone. They don't care. But here, once you send one chip, ten thousand dollars is gone. Right? <laughs> You're in trouble, right? So you have to have a way of testing the hardware itself, the hardware you have designed before we send it to a foundry. The tool, the tool will help you do that, right? The value tool we are going to use will help you do that easily. Understood? And now we have primitives, uh, and I've said this already. Now. Hardware like hardware language like software languages, right? We have um, you can design from the top up or the bottom down, right? Now, if in case I give you in case I give you something like this, um, uh, design something like uh, a public adder, right? You can decide to start from the top. And design it to the logic gates level. The, the logic, uh, in hardware, the logic gates are the lowest level you can get to. You can go beyond logic gates. So you can decide to start from the top and get to the logic gate level. Or you start from the logic gate level and get to the top, right? Now, in case of starting from the top, it means that I have a four bit adder, right? I have a four bit adder that has two inputs, A and B, which are four bits, four bits. Right? It has output sum. Let's say sum. And it has carry out. And then it has carry in. Right? So this will be the top. I'm designed from the top down, right? Now, inside the four bit adder, I'll have a number of others. So inside the four bit adder, I have one bit addicts within the four bit adder. And then each of the inputs will be routed to them. Right? Uh, one bit adder has inputs A and B. One bit, one bit. One bit for A one bit for B. Yeah. Understood? So we have one bit addicts within the four bit adder. Now, I can go down to the one bit adder. What is a one bit adder made up of? Okay, and I don't even have to ask because you guys will not know, right? But you guys, but you guys will know what a one bit adder is made up of. It's made up of an X4 gate, and then it's made up of an AND gate. I don't know which one, some carry one of them. And then we have our inputs. One of them is some, one of them is correct. And I don't know which one of them. You must draw, you must draw the you must draw that two table to know what it is. But I'm just trying to say that the one bit other is made up of logic gates. Right? So now 
If I say design a copy that, I'll be able to design my top model. I know what, and I know that my top model is made up of um, one bit others, four of them. And then inside that one bit other, I design this, uh, this um, and gate and this XO gate, right? So I'll design from the top down, right? Or I could start from my one bit other, right? With the logic gates. Design this logic piece, combine those one with other, and then design my top model. That's how we do it, right? Understood? It's just like software. How, 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 how you guys design your software, it gives almost the same thing top down or bottom up. It depends on you. And then you can actually use both, you can actually combine both of them. Right? Is that easy, right? So now, the first thing is, uh, in the very long we have, uh, the main building block in very long is, is what you call a um, model. So, for instance, for this 4 bit adder, right, this 4 bit adder, the, the top model, we call the top, the, the top model, right? That has everything inside it, right? Top model has um, input A, B, it has some C out, and then carry out, and then, and then we did it, we have another model, one bit adder. Right, so the model is what, is what is the fundamental building block of um, the hardware. I think maybe it, it might be equivalent to the main, the main, the main function in your. Ah, I think from the main, you have what? What is inside the main? You call the functions, right? Okay, it's not really easy because all of these are called models. The one bit is, is a model. The, this, the, the, and, and, and the top model is the model. Now, if you have a simple example like this, the model will have inputs, right? For example, if you have something like this, you have A, B, C as inputs. It will have an output, which is Y here. And then it will have a model name, which is example, right? So now, to define this, this you just, all you do is, um, you take a model, you just write your model, and then the name, the name comes in. Here you have, the name is what? Example. Right? And then the example has some inputs and outputs. And so you have inputs and outputs within this function, right? You have input A, B, C. And then we have output Y. So the model, the, this one will define or will describe the, the name and then what inputs and outputs are within the model. That's simple. And then you always end it with a, an end model. Right? Like your in what me, right? So this will be ended like this in in the hardware language. Is that easy, right? Easy, right? Now, <laughs> now after that, after I've, after I've done this, I love to come and do what, what is called the I/O declaration. Input output declaration, right? Here, uh, comments, one line comments is like this. Get like C, I think, right? And then we have the multi line comment. Like this, maybe you like you see, right? Or, or, all right, all right. So now I have to do my input output declaration. Declaration, this is declaration. First of all, we have our, our inputs. How many of them? A, B, C, right? So this one indicates that. Um, I have three inputs, A, B, C, and then I declare my output. But why? Simple as that, right? Sorry. And then everything has to end with a semicolon. Right, so once. So the model example, after you get the name of the new. Oh, I think we don't and but, the end model. Okay, the end model has no solution. So now, once you do something like that, you feel that maybe if if it is like some um, care marks, you have two marks already, right? 
if I say design something like this and then it's like 10 months, once you do something like this, then people have to declare. Now, always add comments so, so that everybody understands your code. So, if you, you get you get the app, 10 months here, if you do something like this, you have, you have probably that two months. Easy, right? Even, even before you even write anything. Then, after this, the body, of, the body comes. The gay is whatever, 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 comes here. Yeah. It's that simple. Right? So now, this is what we have. Now, if you have an, uh, this is just what I described, right? And the, what? I, I They have their style of coding, they, they call it the uh, coding style. It, it doesn't make a difference, but each company has their style. So if you go to a company, they will say that they use this style, the first one or the second one, and then you might just comply. Right? If you do if you if you go to a company and then they're using this style and then you do this, they'll be very angry with you, right? But they want they want all their code to follow some kind of standard, right? But they are actually basically the same, right? Don't mix them, but even though they are the same, but don't just mix them like that, right? Just make your code standard so that everybody understands what you're doing. Understood? Yes. Now you can uh, you can define um, multi bit um, multi bit kind of variables, right? As I said, uh, always I use like we have four bits, five bits, six bits, whatever, right? So how do you do that? You can have uh, you can declare here as uh, inputs. Once I declare something like this, you could get one zero. This means that this is how many bits? Yeah. 
this means play is <laughs> right? And, uh, I think with with C, you use something like A or something, like it's A or something, right? But it's A but C or B. It's A, it's A, but C. And A bit, and K is like what? That's how. But I'm saying that what is that? Like Kai is what? How many minutes? But like you guys are doing your, your things in like C, C++, plus plus, right? One byte is what? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so now I can also declare something like this. Input 0 is 31, right? They are all the same, but here I must be careful here that I've actually turned the base up like that. Right? I think, uh, I think. <laughs> this one is like declaring arrays in C, right? How do you declare an array? It's like this, right? And then this just means take it, you have it, take it. And then, but the difference is that each body here is an int, right? But you see that this is not actually the same. But this is just take it to its number. And then this one inside the we have each one has taken two bits. So they are not entirely the same like right? And then in, in case I in case I, in case I want to address the bits here, the bits within this, and I just use a thirty one. A thirty one just means the first um, bits. You call the last bit here the image. What? Yes. Right? Most significant bit. And then we have A, 0, to be what? The least name. Significant bit. Right? right? So I can address this location by just taking A and then A, 0, 1, 2. Like how, like how you want to, like how you address an integer, like an array in C. Understood? Do you guys understand? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Ah! When you do input A, the computer automatically gives it a bit. But when you specify it like the test one, so if I do input A, it means one bit. I mean one. One bit. Right? And then. If, if I do input that one, it, it means 32 bits. Right? Now, in case I want to address anybody within this 31, within this 32 bits A, right? I just use A to write 31. This one means the most significant bits with the last one here. And then if I want A0 to represent this one here. And then it's called the least significant bit. Very, very important concept. Right? And then if I want maybe in the middle it's what? A maybe probably 15 or something. Or 60, whatever. Right? So I can address it by just doing something like this. Understood? 
Easy, right? Today is just basics, just easy. Right, so just like in C, I can also do concatenation, paste slicing, duplication, and stuff like that. Right? So here, if I do something like um, assign y to a y. So this symbol means what? Concatenation. Just like I think C has the same. Or concat or something like that. Ah, okay, really. Uh, right. So over here, we have to just use this one and then we just declare the numbers here. And then if we assign it would it would it will, it will combine A3, the value A3, the value within A3, A2, A1, and A0 together, right? Into four bits. So now here we have. One, two, three, four, four bits, right? It's why. Right. We are going through it. We are going through it. I'll, I'll just explain it. Right. So here, for the first one, is is what concatenation. Simple, right? Now we have duplication also. We have duplication. If I have uh, something like. Uh, So I've taken A0, the value within A0, and then I've uh, actually, uh, actually made it 4 bits, right? So it is 4 bit value here. Quick is all A0, 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 the same value, right? Understood? So I can make this simple by doing something like this. This time, this time, the same. Understood? They are both the same, but it means that in case I am addressing this, right, even though it is still 8 bits, I have to address it with A15, A15, A14, A. Like if um, if this is 16, 8, 8, right, and then take the 7, 7, 0, B, right, and then I come and say A0, it is an error. I have to use A8. The same thing with here, in case I come and say B8, it will be at the wrong somewhere. So, how to lose the way. But it just means that it is still 8 bits. So, can you use 2 and 9? Whatever you want. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. Understood? Do you guys understand this? Yeah, yeah. Do you know that the big thing here is 1 
I don't get you. 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 I yeah, um, actually declared in somewhere, and then I am actually selecting the basic thing. Yeah. It's like if one value change, both of them will follow. It's like if you're in they are the same. No, no, no. This one, you are actually. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 first, first. Um, for instance, here, for instance, with, with the A, right? I can just say, um, right? I can have an input like this 50 is 0, right? And then I want to assign some parts of this input. It doesn't matter whether it's 0 or 1, no, no, no. That, one, that, one, that one doesn't matter to us. Oh, and, 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 and I want to understand this one and this one to another variable. So y is equal to a a zero. The value inside they don't matter to us, but we are just assigning. We are just assigning this one to another variable. The values inside they don't really matter like that. Understood? Easy concepts. You guys already know this concept. So now, this A is 15 bits, right? And then maybe I have uh, 16 bits, sorry. I have Y. Y is 2 bits, right? Y is 2 bits. And I want to, and I want to, and I want to assign the, the MSD and the NSD. Combine them. I give it to y. How will I do that? I guess because I need a fifteen comma a zero. Is that simple? What again? We have not assigned sixteen bits here. We have we have assigned the value a fifteen is one bit. If I write something like this, what does it mean? What does it mean? If I write what I have input 15 uh, A and I, I write something like this, what does it mean? I am addressing the value which is just one bit. Understood? Understood? This is a very easy concept to understand. It is not any. <laughs> What's the <that> word? <laughs> Okay, comment, comment, and then it is also case sensitive, right? So some name and then some more letter, some name is not the same. And then you cannot start a name with um, a variable name with a number. I think it is the same as you or something, maybe or not. Okay, so now let's go. Let's go for it now. Uh, now. How do we now start um, trying to write our code? Right, we have two ways of writing the code. Right, we have uh, what is called the structural. structural. And then we have what is called behavioral, right? Behavioral, right? Two ways of writing our code. Now, I've been given. Uh, I've been giving a four bit add, I've been giving a four bit adder, right? And then I said um, design a four bit adder. Right? So first of all, I do a four bit adder to do something like this. This is one bit, right? One bit. One bit. One bit.
So this is a diagram of the four bit adder. Right, the four bit adder has one bit adder inside, and then within the one bit adder, we have again. Something like this. Right? So if I'm asked to if I'm asked to design something like this, right? I will have to I will have to first of all, if I'm using structural model, right? I'll have to for, I will have to first of all describe what this is. Right? Write the code for only this one, right? So this one has 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 to equals A and B, right? So I'll come and define model. Probably the name is what? One bit other. Right? This has uh, some probably carry out or something, right? Carry out. So I have A, B, some, then carry out, whatever. And then I end model. Understood? So I've declared one bit model, right? After I've done that, and I'll and come and declare the four bit adder. Right? Model four bit has A, B, carry out, whatever. Right? And then within the, within the four bit adder, I'll come and call just this one. So, yes, one bit. And I give me the name, maybe one or something. And then I declare some because you see it. And then another one bit. Another one bit. There are four, then another one bit. So you see how it works, right? Yeah, it's just like, like, like a function call. Understood? So ah. So you can even call one bit two times, like one bit one, one bit two. So like each bit is one bit. I am have to design something like this, a four-bit adder, right? Within the four-bit adder, I have one bit addings, right? Within the one bit adder, I have this and this and whatever, right? So first of all, what I mean is that I have to write the code for a one bit adder. So look at this one, right? One bit adder. So I write the model. One bit, and I give it input output name A B whatever it is, whatever there is A B C D or whatever, right? And model, and I write, and I will have to actually declare this once within the one bit adder because we don't want to design it. Now after I've done that, after now come and define my four bit adder. My four bit adder is made up of four one bit addings. Just like a function call, right? You declare it again, model four bits, right? And, and then within this four bit uh, whatever, I'll have one bit. I call one bit four times. One bit. One bit. One bit. <laughs> Right? I've called it four times. What? Yeah, you will see it. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. You will see it very soon. I'm just trying to explain it so that we don't go, we don't take time when when you get there. In an, in an example, we will be asked to draw the behavior and the structure. So, First of all, this is how we do it with structural. Understood? I have to go step by step, right? It's a form of um, hierarchy or something, right? Define the case. So it means that this one bit will have the gates inside. This these two gates inside the one bit. And after that, I call this one four and within the four bits. And then tell me. This is structural. Right? Now, behavioral, right? How do I do that in Yovia? The Yovia gets to that. I just describe what a four bit adder is. Right? So in Yovia, I'll have model 
they say for bits, whatever, with the inputs and outputs, right? End model. But within here, yeah, all I will do is that um, I have my my sum is equal to a plus b. Finish. Now describe the other. I just use this sign, the plus sign, and I'm done. That is the liberal model. Yeah, yeah, I said this is fresh, bro. This is another. I'm going to design this fabric and I'm using structural method. So the the structural means that the gate level method. I start with the gate level, then build up, build up, build up, build up, one by one, right? I have. I have, I have four one bit inside a four bit other. So I have, I have to get, I have to get the ball to find what the, the what is the one bit other. I first of all define the one bit other. Then I come and define the four bit other. But within the four bit other, I have the one bit other. So I call it. I have the 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 four of them right. I call it four times. I can give you some value too. Like you will see very soon. But they get, but they get all mixed. With the, with, the, with the structure, with the behavioral, it's actually very simple. I can describe what I'm doing, right? And then in parallel, we have a plus, minus, a time, to do some of that. So all I do is that I just have to write my model properly, and then with my inputs, I'm going to play everything. And then for the main one, sum is supposed to be A plus B. The one you put the one bit inside, and then one you do the, the addition is sum. So you did it try like on the board. The first one was four, and the next one is twice on the board. This is not the same as this one. I can describe an asset. You know, I can describe Yes, yes, yes. But understood. You guys have understood the difference. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, I said the behavior, you just describe what you are doing. They say it. What am I doing? I'm doing addition. I'm doing addition. So the same format. I just I come and write my, my model format. Give the name. Give it my input. A, B, and whatever, whatever, whatever. Come and come and declare my 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 input, right? After that, what is what am I doing? I'm doing addition. Very simple. My my I have to input A, B. So I just do some. Actually, they are starting out, right? So I just do uh, carry out then some. I've completed. We have done that already. Carry out some is equal to a plus b. I've described it. I've described a perfect pattern. Simple as that. The sum is an output. Yeah. Okay, 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 you as you go, you understand, as you go, you understand. As you go, you understand. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. So let Let's continue now. This is a clear example. This is a clear example, all right? I have my schematic. Like how I just described um, the other example, right? I have A select C, right? Inside A select C, I have um, another model called small. I give it the name I first, then another small, the same model, right? I second, right? Here, I have this entire thing, what they call the top model, right? The top model has input A select C, output Y. Understood? 
So, and I want to, and I want to, and I want to actually uh, design this one using structural method, right? So, how, how do I do it? I have to come and describe small. Let me see. I describe small. Yeah. Right? Look on the board. I have to first of all describe small. So model small. Small has what? Input A, B, output Y. Input A, B, output Y. Then I describe what small does. Don't worry about that now. Then I, then I end model, right? Then I have my top model also. This is the top model. Now, how to now define this one, this one and this one, within here, right? Now, take notes here. We have, uh, we have input and output here. Only the input and output. But within the model, there is some kind of um, interconnections. It is not an input, it's not an output. It is a way that interconnects one model to another. So we describe it here as Y and N1. Easy, right? Understood? What again, Master? Okay. No, no, no. This, this, this is actually your choice. You are actually designing. Any other question? Please hurry up and let's continue. Masa, any question? You are okay. So now, you see, that is a top model. And then, I, 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 now, I have to come and define, as I said, this one with the here. So, that's the wire. Then I, I cut small, I first, the first one, right? And then, I <laughs> okay. Hey, do it. Okay, okay, now wait. Can you take time here? Okay, okay, okay. It, it, it is actually simple. This is I this is I first. The first one, right? The first one has A B Y. What do you see? A B Y. So I call it first. Small. There's the name. Function for simple, right? Small. Then to bracket here. This dot means that the, this dot A means that what is the, the input here? It's A, right? So dot A, dot B, and then dot Y, right? Then I connect A here because A from the top model connects to this one. This will be connected here. So that is it. Let me see. This select, yeah, connected to B. Connected to B, right? This N1 here, which is connected to B, it's connected here. Understood? Yes, That is right. Then, after that, I kind of describe the second one, because there are two of them. So, small again, the same name, because it is the same function for. All it again. Then another, again the same dot a dot b dot y because in the same one a is y, right? Now by here dot a is connected to n one because yeah. have you seen it? Yes. B is connected to c, yeah. and then y is connected to the output y, yeah. right? Hey! Okay. Yes. Okay. So now here, the most important thing is that we have another star of actually doing this. Uh, this dot, so it means that any time I have the dot, the dot will define that this is, uh, this is, this is, this is actually outside the model. This is actually, this is actually outside the model I'm actually describing now, right? So this dot here, this dot here means that this is outside this model actually. It is another model. 
I said it, and I even came here to even show you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's just like function. Yeah, the function is always like C, like Y, uh, maybe Ada. Then you come to it's me. Then you call Ada. Then you give me some values. So it so 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 like anytime it sees it, it goes outside the function. Then that's why it has to be just like C. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Understood. Understood. Any question before I continue? If you don't understand, um, then I'm going step by step. So if you don't understand anything, then I, I move on. Please, you'll be confused. So if, if you don't understand anything, yes, yes, ask. Except you, except you, but. <laughs> <laughs> so understood, right? Very easy, right? You can guess. Huh? <laughs> Go over again. Yeah, aside um, the dots, what you see, what what you see the dots A, the dot A means uh, I am looking for an input or output that is outside this model, but inside another model called small. This small is this model. So like how so like how will you explain this in C? Okay, okay, okay. You guys write C language, right? You guys write C, right? So how it's me. Right or wrong? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, right. Yeah, right. So we did the explain. What? 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 <laughs> what? I'm just going to explain an example. <laughs> so now here, the, 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 this man here is my fourth model. Understand? Understood. So now I come and I do a function called how to how the function small. Right? So the function small is always outside. Maybe void small, right? This function is outside, right? Just like in C, they say. So I come and call it small. Right? And then what? Do I, have, do I have a name? I don't know. You see, you have, you have, you have a name. Is there a name? So now I call small, and then I pass values um, A, B, select, and what? So A, B, and what? Yeah, so now I come the second one, I pass more. Then another one. So here for the for the very logs, for the very log here, instead of having a select with um anyone, we use the dot dot a and then this dot a will be the input here. Understood? Understood? 
So, so d dot a will be the input here, and then in the bracket the input within the within the model. As easy as that, right? Now, understood? Please, this is just basic. This is the basics of what we are doing. If you don't understand. Of you guys, I tell you, sir. Understood? Understand that this is against the basics. The syntax of, of the language is what I'm teaching right now, right? The syntax. So now we have we have another way of doing this. Just like in the C. Instead of using the dot, I just use what is in the C, C language, right? I guess for small like I want to I first. A, B, N1. Right? I guess for small. Please, please understand here. I guess for small. A, B, N1. It's the same as this. N1, not the black N1 here. Pardon? To pass the variables within a function. Function for. If you are describing C language, if you are describing your C language, right? And then you have, and then you have this say M1 between this one. And, and I want to pass that M1 to this one. How do I do it? I can't bring, bring the, I can't bring, bring this program. How to this function to this, this program? And then it will pass that value to that function. <laughs> This. This, this, this is my top model. I'm, I'm just saying that I can replace this part. I can guess with this part with something like this. That's what I'm saying. It is this one is within this function. It is within this model. Master, you guys are very quick. You guys are very quick. You guys are very quick. So I mean that I can do something like this. Instead of doing dot A, dot B, dot Y, right? I can just do something like this, A, B, Y. Or I use my dot A, dot B, dot Y. Now, master, master, what again? Okay, okay. So now, I can have this, or I have uh, dot A, what A, right? Dot what? Yes, B, 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 So, I can have this or this. Now, the dangerous thing here is that if I'm using this one, right? The name is A, select, must match exactly what is in the small model. If I'm passing the value to it, if I follow that one, the first one is an input A, the second one is an input B, the last one is an output Y. Once I make a mistake and switch, then I'll have a very big issue. Right? But for this one, I can say dot B bracket select dot A bracket what? A and then dot uh, what? B dot Y to bracket one, M1. So, I don't, I, I, so for here, I can always change the order. It doesn't matter because I'm actually calling. I specify that one itself. So the danger here is that once I switch anything up, my circuit will behave abnormally. Right? Now, the other part is always like you have, you have, you have actually described the uh, 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 model small. Right? Understood?
Who has an extension cord? Okay. Seven minutes break. Seven minutes break. Seven minutes break. I have to finish this one before I have to finish the whole slide. So, depending on how you guys understand. If you guys understand fast, I can finish it in 30 minutes. Seven minutes. So, please, let's come back uh, at 12 minutes. No, 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 and I can't stay here. And I can't stay here that long, Master. I have things to do. So, yes, 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 Refresh your brain for seven minutes. Sir. Eleven six minutes. It's eleven six minutes, so you guys. Okay, so we continue, you continue. So you guys understand what this is, right? Please, let's continue. Let's continue. Master, please hurry up, hurry up, that's the way to go. Master! Speed fast, speed up, Master. I tell you fast, you say. You fast. I tell you fast. Okay, so now you guys understand everything here. Now we start the coding itself. Very, very easy. Yes, you guys understand the basic concepts you have done. So, why is this circuit? As I said, you must understand what the loader is doing and what they implement for you to understand what they are doing. So, what is this gate? What is this? So this is this is a very simple 
too much too much longer. Now, what? So now, why is it too much longer? We have, we have the select here, right? We have, I'll put this on Y, right? I'll put this Y, right? We have, input this on this zero, D what? Zero, one. So now, what happens? If S is zero, just go to the second. If S is zero, what happens here? If S here is zero, this is zero, right? This is one. And then, if S is zero, here is zero. This is cut off. If you want, to will pass through here. Right? If S is one, what happens? If here is zero, this is an inventor you must do one. This zero will come here. Now, if S is zero, once you have an end gate, one of the inputs is zero, then I give you a second cutoff. So this will put the second cutoff from the whole thing. So we are now dealing with this one. And that's very easy, right? If S is one, here is zero, here is cutoff. You want to watch this is a simple multiplayer. Easy, right? Just easy, easy. The concept. If you want to understand the concept, you are done. So here, um, you have to draw the truth table and then go to the truth table and then write for you to understand that it is multiplexer. But once you have that experience that this is what happens, you know that this is a simple multiplexer. Right? The one is zero, right? Yes. Zero. D zero is zero, so the zero one. And so understand. Understand something here. Wait, wait. Logic gate, right? Understand something here. An gate. If you have a two input and gate, maybe. Why, right? Once one of the inputs is, is, is zero. If A here is zero, you don't care about this input anymore. I don't care about it. Once here is zero, automatically here is zero. You know, it doesn't matter what comes in here, nobody cares anymore. Now, if here is a one, I care about this input. It means that the output is this unit. If one of the inputs, if B is one, right, it means that the output Y is equal to A. Whatever the value A is, is the output. Understood? That is what I'm saying. All the gates follow the same kind of procedure. If, if A is zero, why is zero? If A is one, why is one? It is the basis of the logic case, right? To not go through, we don't have going through. Listen, listen, the, the simple thing is for the hand gate, for the truth table, what are going to do? As I said, once here is zero, what are you doing? You're doing careful. It's just going to get zero. Once here is one, the truth table is zero. Once here is one, why is it supposed to be two? Any volume, why is it? Any volume, why is it? That's what we are saying, why? You can go through that with the admit, with the old gate open. Basics, basics. <laughs> okay, so this is a very simple the what? Uh, we put a uh, multiplexer, right? So then, how do you design this using the very low code? You see how easy that is, right? You see how easy that is? I have, so I have this, I have this and it. Understand that this is what it is. Right? So, this is an example of the structural kind of um, design. Because we are using a basic logic gate. Right? So, here you have a not gate here. For this one, you have to include S. Understand it from here. You have to include S. And then we have, so now for the AND gate, for the inverter, we have to do S, and then we have not S, MS. Understood? 
This is this is my input output. The, this zero, D one, S, and Y are my input output. Right? Anything, anything internal, anything, anything internal here will be declared as Y S. Just like as we saw with the N one. Understood? 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 Hey, the way they are looking at me, <laughs> So here, Y1 is a wire, right? Y2 is a wire, right? This is input. D0, D1, S, out of Y. D0, D1, input S, out of Y. Y1, S, Y, Y1. And S is just the output of the not case. The node gate has input S but with NS. Simple, right? So first of all, I start with the I start with the node gates. The node gates now uh, within variable this affects the not the and or I think X or something. They are fixed. Right? And then once you lose a node gate, right? You have to lose the note gate and then you write the name, any name you want, whatever. Or you not one or something. And then within it, the first value of, of you know that the node gate has only one input and one output, right? So the first value is the output, and then the other value is the input. Simple, right? So here, if I do something like not J1, NS, NS is the output, S and the input. Simple, right? Now, then we go to that. We know that we have an gate and then an extra gate, right? We have an G1, Y1 is the input. Ah. So for the AND gate, it has two inputs and one output. The first value is the output, the second, the second third value is the input. So we have D0 and S and then Y1 output. Oh, G1. Uh, 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 out to Y2. G1 S. All gates, we have to put Y1, Y2, out to Y. You have actually described the basic it in parallel. This is, this is what we call the structural modeling. Very easy, right? So if I ask you to, if I ask you to first of all draw the circuit board, to input blocks, that's how it looks like. If I ask you to just write the, the very low code for the two input mocks that you have drawn, that's how it's done. Very easy, right? <laughs> easy, right? You just. Understood? If, please, if you don't understand, if you don't understand it, ask before I continue. I don't want to come back. Understood? What, 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 what? <laughs> That's what, what? If you understand the concept, any circuit at all in the world, you can actually get anything. So, should I continue? Yes. Ah, uh, what? Because they are using different inputs and then they have to. So the question, in case it is a machine, would it add 
Now, 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 now. Can you look at the same slide? Sorry. Look, what is the idea? What is the idea? Once you have the same slide, I don't want to tell you this idea. What I tell you is that there's a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this. Once you have the same slide, what are they going to be able to do this? What are they going to be able to do this? Those are it. Well, you mean that this one can come inside you? Why would I tell you? Well, why would you? Why would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have what? Mox 2. Okay, okay, yeah, Mox 2. Yeah, it's yeah, the same thing, it's the same thing. No, nah, it's just the same. Once, once the input is one bit, you can just combine it. If it's two bits, then you have an issue. You, like if this was two bits, then you have actually separated. But yeah, it is the same. I can do input D0, input D1, input. It doesn't matter. Please, can I continue? You guys understand, right? <laughs> okay, simple. Write the very low code for this, for just five months right now. Write the very low code for this. You see what we just. Please, please write it. Let me, let me see something. You see this same concept. Write this code because I do this code right. Now next, this is a circuit. Write your code. Simple. Using structural modeling. Let me put it that way. Using the end gate. This is just simple. For this, this will take seconds. You have inputs. You have outputs. You have some wires inside here. That one. It depends on you. Write the code. Are you done? You see, once you are able to write it, you don't want like it becomes very very easy. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. I mean, for three, five months, it's still too many, right? For three, five months. So, yes, ignore it and yes, for good, at five months. So that's why, that's why two people cannot have the same answer. You are using different names. That's, that's why. That's, that's, Yeah, somebody is looking at this one. Capture it, capture it in your head. <laughs> you guys are young. Professor, you guys are too young to this. <laughs> are you done? <laughs> OK.
okay, 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 okay. Yes, declare the declare the inputs and outputs and now so you don't do any function. Let me just see the input and output. Right. Okay, now the point here is that the, the, the whole point here is that writing this in structural level is not good. It takes too long, right? Yeah, but, but I think somebody has done it. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Now the, the whole point is that doing this doing this in a structural form is actually not advisable because it will take a long a long time, right? So now we are going to describe this in behavioral model. And this is how it looks like in behavioral model. We are describing the function. What the setting actually does. Right? So you can see how easy it is. You see, just go, just go to it. You have not, you have um, one, three and this, right? One, two, three. You have an orbit, right? Then the output of the of the and this, this output goes to this, this output goes to this, this output. 
right? This is the first one. The first one means not A, but not A, not C, not A, right? Not B and not C. This is the first one, right? This is right. The second one is A, not B, not C. The third one is A, B, not A, not B, not C. And then we connect. Then we connect this one. This or this or this one. What is this one? What? Understood. So here, the most important thing is that you use this statement called the assigned statement. So you assign the wire. Why? This way. This is the second and the The second and the The second and the The second the is 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 You guys get the idea, right? <laughs> What, 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 what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to make a point that the structure takes a long time. And then you're going to write a lot of code, but with the, your very, uh, it's just like one line of code will do what the structure does. But they both do the same way. Right? And then, in actual fact, you'll be using both in the same code, actually. Yeah, both. Both in the same code. And that's what can kind of continue. So, as I said, the most important thing here is that assign, to different types of things can be used. Assign the wire to. This is where the overall can come see. Yeah, it's just a single line. Understood? So now, for the Ovaria, these are the gates to use. Very, very easy, right? The what? The what? It is the first part, right? Or the second part, right? Or the third part. That's the class. It's just one long phrase. What's that? With the flow pen, bro. Please, can I continue? Very, very easy, right? Easy, easy, easy. So now, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Understood. Understood, understood. Yeah, and I just go home and go and think about it. <laughs> so now, <laughs> uh, once you understand, <laughs> so now, <laughs> okay, now, so now, okay, you have your model, we have one gate. This is how it's done. As I said, you have to use the assigned statement. It's very important to use the assigned statement, right? But that is the, the rules here. So this view, this, once you actually 
write a code like this, right? And then you pass this code through the to the grinder to it will give you a schematic like this. Understood? Something like this, yes. Okay, this is a, a reduction operator. Right? You have one bit. <laughs> you see that the output here is just one bit, right? The, and then you are you want to um, and all the the uh, all the bits you need a and assign it to y. Right? How do you do that? I can do it this way. Assign y is equal to a and a7 and A6 and but it, it takes too long, right? So and then I can also design it or I can also say that um, assign y is equal to and k and it will do the same thing. Right? That's why I said once you're writing your code, everybody will be different. Somebody will write something like this, somebody will do something like this. But in the in the end, they do the same thing, right? So it will do it will do something like this. No, no, no. You try to avoid loops in hardware because you actually implement the thing in the, in the hardware itself. You try to avoid you don't use loops in hardware. So, so now, once you write something like that, you can do it in a lot of ways based on the tool, based on the hardware tool you are using, right? You can do it in a lot of ways. You can actually do it this way. A right. So you have seen how, even though you have written a very simple code like this, but in the hardware, this is how it's going to be executed. You're going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 and gates. So it means that in effect, if somebody writes something like this, assign A and this, you are, you are both getting the same results. And that's too cool. Right? Easy, right? Once you just think small, you just know that ah, this is how it's going to be. Now, for the we used um, behavioral model to do something like this, right? And we should use structural model to do something like this. We have not gate and gate to do something like this, right? We can just use behavioral model and just have one statement to do all that part. So you guys, you guys know why this is already the. Ternary, ternary operator, right? Conditional operator, in C. And in C, you guys have seen this, this before, right? So now, what can you write? This is the ternary operator C. Because it operates on the three inputs. S, D, D1, D0, right? We have like. S D1 D0. But here I guess for it. Yes, understand that they are for Now here, if we assign y is equal to if s is true, if s is one, if s is true, if s is high, they are all the same. True high, whatever. If s is true, right? D uh, D1 to y, right? And else D0 to y. Is this is this is you see. Yes, I've seen this. Okay. So now, what you have, I can read. Somebody can read. Somebody can also write it in the same way. If x, right, y is equal to what? You want. This is 
are the same. Or these are the same. And then this just means a multiplexer. I want to see if else statements it means that you are actually designing a multiplexer. Is the right? This is easy. This, this is like in C. I think it's the same thing in C. Or oh, I'm lying. Anybody who who in C. So we have seen this conditional. Hey, it's everywhere. Okay, now you have seen it. So it just means if S is high, if 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 S is true, if S is one, if Y or give you one to y else give that I guess alright understood yeah no no because you see understand that because s is just one bit right if s is not zero then it is the other value now if it was two bits we have a different case altogether so it means that if let's say s was two bits, so it means that if s is zero, do this. Else, if s is one, do this. If s is two, do this. If s is three, do this. So we have a whole chain of. Uh, uh, if else nested, if else kind of. Look at look at where you know that. Understood. So this will just depict a multiplexer. So once you see an if else statement, mostly it depicts a multiplexer. So you see that all this we are doing is actually. Um, what? We are only doing combination of right? None of this stores anything. There's no memory involved. There's no D flip flop involved. There's no latch involved, right? You guys know what D flip flop and latches are. You have seen that no D flip flop, no latch, just combination logic. So understand that we are, we are only coding for combination logic right now. Understood? Master. You guys are tired or something? Uh, I mean, too, Charlie. I am at How can I do? So let's continue. That's what, uh -huh. As I said, you can have nested uh, if within, and then for the for the conditional statement, you can have kind of nested. You can go and study it more on your own. Okay, now here, as with, as with um, any language, right, uh, we have what we call precedence, right? The most important operator and then the least important operator, right? I think in in very long, the most important or the highest precedence is the not gate. Once, it, once the not gate comes, it has to be executed first. If there's no bracket, like board mass, if there's no bracket, the not gate gets executed first. Before the, multi, uh, before the multiplier, the divider, and then the modular, right? Then before plus, minus. So the lowest is the general operator, the conditional operator. So understand, once you understand this, and then you see a circuit, or you see a code, you know that uh, you know how to actually uh, go through the code and see the output, right? Understood? Now, we have numbers. We, we, we have numbers in very block, and then we, we declare numbers just like in the board. We have eight, eight, zero, 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 zero. So now this once once I'm declaring a number right. The first one is the 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 bits number of bits, right? This gives me like this number is infinite. This gives me that it's what the b means what the, the b is the base, but the b means here binary one or zero. You can have um, eight, eight decimal. We can have eight bits hexadecimal, very, very important. Right? Eight bit decimal, eight bit hexadecimal. So, so but anytime you can see this eight bits, then we have what do I mean? Then we have um, the base something, which is binary, hexadecimal, or, or decimal, right? This is just what this underscore you need. Make you bring the value easily, right? It's just 
Understood? So now, if I write something like four bit one one zero, the value that gets stored is one zero zero one. That's the value, the actual value that gets stored. If I write, uh, let's say something like you see that I didn't bring anything here. Uh, I did write this. Uh, if I write nine hundred zero one, it means that uh, it refers to a thirty bit, a thirty two bit value, and then all the fronts are zeros. The set to zero one, the old zero one, the rest of the bit, uh, the base are zeros. Understood? Just like, um, just like, okay, you have some like, go up it, and then on zero, it means everything is zero. Understood? Is the right? Everything is zero. 12 bits, because there's a zero, this means you have 12 bits and then everything is zero. Easy. Easy, easy. Now, we can have, as I said, in digital system, we have, Three kinds of numbers in this job. One, which is high blue. Five groups or three groups or whatever. You have one, you have C, right? Idea. 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 Um, the rule is that if you have a logic gate, right? A logic gate always has a value on the output. All logic gates has an output, or a value and the output, all of them, right? Whether whether they have valid or not, the equals to the case will be a one, right? It will be a zero, or it will be an x. X means we don't know the value. It could be a one, it could be a zero, right? Now, the only proof is that they can be high numbers and output of a logic gate. At the output of a logic gate, like and or they can be a high numbers. The only place where the high numbers will case is a tri state buffer. That's when high beta cannot get, right? Just like this. So, this is how we, we declare the proof of the tri state buffer. Right? Assign y is equal to 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 equal Hey, Mr. I'm tired. You love it small, you love it. One five, you close at two. Two, two. <laughs> <laughs> So please, two, two, please. And, and, I, and I want to finish this one so that you guys can have time to relax on your own and just do whatever you want. Yes, two, yes, two. So now, this is very important. Now, now Master, you said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Because, because we didn't mean that you get when you have to write the so that and I want to and I want to get the when you get the point then you then you go to the slide now if I was actually doing something. We we would have done like five slides right now. Put like just making you guys. No, we just got that. We just got that. So now this table is very important. Now it it will come in your head. I'm giving them money.